talk about energy. Um, now, we are facing, you know, a terrible time, uh, very sad with the war in Ukraine. It's a very dark time, you know, for certainly the residents of that country, for the rest of us around the world. And there's lots of support there for, obviously, uh, the nation. However, it has highlighted um, to us um, that we are very dependent on energy from hostile parties. You know, lots of uh, oil coming from Russia, gas, etc., um, and I appreciate this is not something that's going to be solved overnight. We are not going to see the war probably just come to an end and everything back to normal, even if it was to come to, you know, a peace uh, keeping end. There's too much that's damage that's been done and there's things that are going to have to be resignated and, you know, reformed and re-debated and discussed and it's going to go on for a long while. So kind of a wake up moment for everybody i think globally you know we've all kind of like okay we're very independent on others um what should we be doing you know um how should we now be encouraged to think about our own energy um you know should this be driving us forward to think more about solar winds uh or, or you know dare i even say you know splitting the atom and having fusion and stuff like that where do we go from here what are the the next steps especially yeah. as we're going to very dependent on the electricity infrastructure for charging cars. You know, that's just once we get the infrastructure, then we need the power as well. Exactly. So uh, there's there's even before this war, there's already been um, disruption and crises that have caused people to kind of have that wake up call. Right. I think that wake up call, everyone is awoken. It is more what do we what do we do? And uh, uh, fossil fuels eventually we eventually will stop using those right i mean we've all made the rules and and you know they will so how do we transform and what does that transition look like it's interesting for european countries you have very small land masses right so for you to have renewable electricity which is solar or wind it is actually not practical, like you actually don't have enough land mass or different types of topography to support having solar wind fuel all of your electrification needs. The United States, we're very lucky. I mean, we could we could be 100 percent independent and only rely and not any dependence on fossil fuels in the United States. Really? I mean, like deserts, you could like, yep. Australia too. I mean, there's tons of land in Australia that you can just set up solar panels. Nobody wants to go out to, you know, the dry land that's, you know, that's you know, not outback, pretty. You know. Yeah, the outback, you know, set it all up in the outback, but in the middle of the United States, we're not, you know, and so, and, and also wind and also location, um, like the, you know, in terms of being closer to um, the equator and, and uh, sure. larger sun amounts, right? So, uh, the renewable energy is totally doable for, but for a country like Germany, it's not because there just isn't, you, you can't. So you're going to have to source your renewable energy from other places. And so this is where the whole hydrogen economy and one of the hottest topics that, I mean, we have analysts who just study hydrogen. It's, it is, it is the big thing. Um, and that is really a, a solution to, to this carbon neutrality and and uh, climate change is 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 this type of technology. So basically, instead of fossil fuels, or coal, etc., you could you could have Australia set up all these solar panels, and then the electricity gets transformed into hydrogen. Right, you break up the hydrogen and oxygen. And just like we transport oil today or natural gas in these big tankers, you retrofit the tanker and the hydrogen gets stuck in the tanker. And then when it gets to the port, it then gets put into fuel cells and creates the energy there. So that whole looking at how hydrogen is stored and transported and the technologies around that is one of the hottest areas. Uh, it's something we, we literally are pulsing on um, with uh, all, and that's where the energy organization, you know, these energy companies know that their fossil fuel business model is in is going away. They're not stupid, so they're they're creating new business models and new parts of their company 
to look at where where they're going to generate their revenue and grow. And this is a really hot area, and it's it's it is the future. Um, is 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 this hydrogen economy? It'll be interesting to see how it it changes over the next you know 10, 20, 50 years. But well, one of our, um, one of one of our uh, team, uh, Craig Davis, had actually said that um, he's based in Germany, and he was talking about the hydrogen economy, and he he basically said that hydrogen goes really well with heavy industry and in that the, those two can, you know, can, can actually work. You set up a, 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 a steel smelting plant or something else like that with near a hydrogen um, sort of refinery or whatever you call it. And those two, those two, sub, those two uh, factors work really well together. I mean, it's, it's, there are lots of people, there are some greater brains than ours obviously working on it, but you know, there, there is a, there is a, 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 you know, it's encouraging to, to see that there are solutions being good, but very yeah. interesting that you said that um you know that, that america could stand on its own two feet you know and energy wise if it, if it actually wanted to and i mean yeah. Yeah. there's politics there's there's yeah. money. <laughs> it's, always <laughs> <big problem. laughs> it's always politics but i mean uh, let me just i just want to bring this down to a basic level because obviously i said that you know that, that um this is this is going to people are going to be able to come away with with some interesting facts i mean just what do you say to people? I mean, that 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 sort of say, well, you know, this is all part of the normal ebb and flow of the planet, and yeah. carbon builds up. You know, it's always been building up long before humans got involved and things like that. I mean, what what is the the standard adult response to that? Yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a business person. You, you know, I came from you know, my my I'm a, a business person and not an activist or anything like this. Sure, um, but Facts are facts, science is science, and um, we are putting a lot of carbon into the atmosphere. It accumulates, it stays there for 10 years. So it's, it's, it's just accumulating and accumulating and we're, it's happening, right? You can't not say that the earth is warming up and that we're not starting to see uh, potential you know, catastrophic na nature events happening, which, are being, which were predicted scientists long ago right okay so that's just my personal opinion right i was in a in a bar and everybody i work with it thinks that way so i, I think everybody thought that way <laughs> <laughs> i was in a bar in boston where i was the, we're headquartered there and i'm in a hotel uh, bar having dinner right it's a week of, like just by myself having dinner and this gentleman asked me where i work and we get we get into it he says well you know so what the uh, earth warms up and we all become extinct? That's just what's going to happen. It happened to the dinosaurs. It will happen to the human race. So what? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my gosh, what a, a kind of not even denial. It was a, fa a fatalist kind of attitude. Right? Nilistic, isn't it? Yeah. And, and it's really struck me. I still can't understand, like, hey, like, like, you can't not want to do something about this. <laughs> like, right? like, oh, look, okay, let's just all die. You know, like, I, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, hello, the scientists are telling us something. Let's listen and let's like protect our children and save the earth. Like, how would you not want to do that? But there are people here who are in either this level of denial to actual fatalistic um, beliefs, you know, it's, it's just, it's just really hard for me to get my head around that. And we love you and your business to join us on our voyage. If you're interested in finding out more about how your small ship can help rescue the planet for free, sign up at www.streamaidlive.com and we look forward to working with you.